Hello, and welcome to another Legions Imperialis video, or for some of you experiencing deja vu, the same video as last time. However, I have chosen to re-record that video with the new audio equipment that I've received, as well as updated information regarding some of the math calculations, specifically behind the record trait, thanks to uh, the person later that I'll discuss has pointed out where the error was at. Some channel updates, I've included an update to the master unit list, which can be found linked below. As well as, uh, this is my first test with the new audio equipment. So you want to destroy some structures? We needed to first discuss when, how, why, what the point is, and things like that. First thing is why. You want to remove those garrisons, as garrisoned infantry can be very difficult to shift, especially when they are near objectives. Additionally, Knights and Titans do get an obstruction bonus from those buildings when they are being shot at, and that can be found on page 57 of the rulebook. In order to target a building, you must have the normal targeting capability, which is line of sight and range. You must be able to damage the building, which is found in a lot of the traits. I'll discuss those on the next slide. Titans, in and of itself, being a Titan, allows you to smash the building when you are in base contact with it. When you are shooting at a building, because it is large, immobile, you do get a plus one. However, when it comes to the save of the building, the armor save, it does roll 2d6 and add those together. This can make buildings much more durable than it might initially seem otherwise. There are some intricacies between the engagement range and the combat range when in base contact with the buildings, especially when it comes to Titans. I'm not going to discuss those in detail, with the exception of one interaction that has been sent to GW regarding an FAQ. But it should be noted that even if a Titan is in base contact with a building that is garrisoned, the Titan itself is not engaged or pinned. If you are looking to reduce some of those nice-looking Civitas buildings, or any buildings in general, to less nice looking rubble there are a few traits that you have to have first off bombing run bunker buster demolisher heavy barrage heavy beam wrecker um special thanks to somebody who pointed out that there is in fact one heavy beam weapon in the game and that can be found on the psi titan which we'll discuss a little bit later probably and then a special thanks to 666 Lumberjack finding the error in the Wrecker damage calculation, which had artificially inflated the required save for that. So I have included that specifically in this part of the presentation. The number one comment that I was getting on the previous version of this video was regarding the Wrecker trait and how it interacts with the advanced fire move. It should be noted on pages 54 and 55 that detachments that are engaged and pinned at the start of the first fire stage cannot be activated and simply discard their first fire order. The current rules as written discussion that has happened in several of the discard forms is that you cannot wrecker with a first fire order when you are pinned because your order goes away. However, in the advancing stage, players activate their eligible detachments issued with an advance order. So if you even if you're pinned, you still activate, you cannot simply fire and that's because a detachment can be activated and may fire during the advancing stage if it is not engaged and pinned but since it can't fire when it is pinned we need to take a look at the statement of what is an eligible unit and whether or not it can still activate and eligibility is kind of coming down to the phrase the order a detachment is issued with determines which stage it can be activated in so eligibility is simply based on the order that it has and not necessarily whether or not it can fire in that phase. Of note, this fact has been sent to GW, and I realize it is not the only interpretation of this rule. Um, I'm still waiting for a response from this. So by all means, if you disagree with it, go for it. It, it is not the end-all, be-all of variation of the record trait that can be found. Um, it has been nearly a month since we have sent that request, but hopefully we'll get some confirmation in response soon. Moving on to the weapons. Uh, right now there are 12 weapons, which can be reasonably expected based on probability to one-shot a Civitas structure. 
I've listed all the structure types here, but this time I've broken it down to a percentage chance to wound and then how many wounds it does. And with that, an average number of wounds that the structure can reasonably be expected to take. I'm using Civitas as it's the only one released in a plastic form, and it's a nice baseline. If you want to look at this information in more detail or take a look at some of the other weapons, please use the Google spreadsheet linked below. Of the 12 weapons, there are nine that are exclusive to Titans, two that are exclusive to Knights, and then one that can be found on the Marauder Colossus, which is a big one right there. We'll talk about that one in detail later. I'm an Astartes player, so I'll start with some of the detachments that are found in there. And the way I've determined which ones make the list are, well, first off, Astartes only have these few that can destroy them, so I'll talk about all of those. But there's a couple that I didn't for the Knights, Titans, and the Solar Auxilia. So in order to be on this list. They have to have the capability to damage structures. And I don't just mean, okay, if it can deal, you know, a fifth of a wound on average, it's not going to make the list kind of thing. But if you can take that in a large detachment and you're getting 10 of them or whatever, then that is enough to actually kill a building. The cost of those, is is it an exorbitant amount or um, are you going to have to dedicate so much of your army for a primary structure collapsing unit that it's going to hamper everything else. The efficiency of that unit. For example, we'll talk about a vehicle later that has a hull-mounted weapon, but if you're shooting that at a building, your turret-mounted weapon is completely wasted because it, it doesn't do anything. It can't damage that. So there are quite a few of these that have some efficiency deficiencies or... The other thing with efficiency is whether or not it has a role that it can perform once that building is destroyed. All right, the Rapier with the Quad Launcher has an option for 130 points for eight of them. Now, this isn't the minimum or the maximum, but I, actually, I think it is the maximum for this case. But you can transport this in like a Thunderhawk if you really wanted or something along those lines to get it in position. And with that, it has a 16-inch direct fire with Demolisher. Each model in the unit has 0.19 wounds. It's actually 0.185, which is why if you're shooting all eight, you can reasonably expect about a, a wound and a half when you're targeting that Civitas structure. This is a medium-range unit, and the main reason it makes this list is the fact that it's useful against other targets. It does have a 30-inch range option. Um, it does have that crack versus frag fire modes and different things like that. So it is a decent model or detachment that can be used in multiple armies in order to uh, affect the battlefield both against structures and against other things as well. You can kind of extend that medium range if you're loading up eight of them in a Thunderhawk because it is a heavy assault transport. And, and that way you can get that threat against uh, a backline building if you really want it early on. However, you're going to need to protect them in the meantime. The Kratos Heavy Tank. This one didn't change either based on the calculations. This is 210 points for three of them. And again, three is not the minimum nor the maximum models you can take in this. However, I've chosen three because at two wounds per model, the 8-inch Melt the Blast Gun deals 0.67 wounds per model. And that gives you a total expected damage of two wounds when you are shooting at that Civitas building. The other nice thing about this is if you go and watch my video on the Kratos versus Lehman Russ Vanquisher video, there is a break point with morale because if you are shooting and killing the tanks in this detachment, you have to do four wounds in order to cause that morale roll and things like that. So having that extra or third Kratos is a really big benefit um, both for this short range detachment as well as for any of the other times you would take a two wound model in a detachment. The, the variation that you would use with your Sponson and hull mounted weapons is with the point defense heavy bolters. And again, at two wounds per model, it's very durable. It has a high save and things like that. It is, however, short range when it comes to um, tanks. However, for destruction or collapsing of structures, it's not that short range. Eight inches is a pretty respectable range considering it does have that movement it can do in the advance as well.
The thing about this is it is going to be susceptible to infantry, walkers, and other things, maybe ogrins that can get up close to it. So you're going to want to pair this with some infantry or walkers of your own that can help screen it while it gets in and does its job. There is, again, an FAQ. However, I believe this one's a little more definitive. Uh, a question that has been sent to GW. If you are choosing to shoot the melt the blast gun at a structure and then all of your point defense heavy bolters at a secondary target, which is an infantry inside the structure, what is the exact timing of that occurring? So as written right now, it is commonly accepted that you would destroy the structure. And then by the time the heavy bolters come up with the order that you resolve the hits before moving on to the next hits, the infantry that previously were garrisoned in the structure do not get in the cover safe and would only have the rubble plus one um, or minus one to hit when shooting at them. Next up is probably my personal favorite that I have discovered just from making this video is the Leviathan Siege Dreadnought, and that is 110 points for six. Again, not the smallest, not the largest. It should be noted, however, that these can also be taken, up to four of them, as an upgrade to the um, Contemptor Dreadnought detachment as well. However, I've chosen not to include that because if you have six, it's kind of the magic number when it comes to destroying buildings with the Cyclonic melt the lance At just under 0.4 wounds per model, with six of them, you're getting 2.34 wounds total, and you can reasonably be expected to destroy a Civitas building in one shooting phase. Now, interestingly enough, this is one of the few models that has a second weapon that can damage structures, and that would be the Leviathan Siege Claw. And this one was mathing out to be more efficient previously. It does drop to 1.44 wounds per model, totaling 8.64 wounds total. And actually, I think that's pretty nice, and maybe that could be your primary wrecker feature. So I actually think taking the... Um, the other variations of the Leviathan Siege Dreadnought might be a little bit better. The Volkite Caliber with the Cyclonic melt lance has some anti-synergy with it because if you're shooting the building, your Volkite Caliber shots are wasted. They can't be shot at a secondary target or anything like that, which is why I think maybe if you paired it with the Leviathan Storm Cannon, you might actually find a better unit. You have that longer range. It pairs with the Volkite. And then you can just march forward and rely on your Leviathan Siege Claw in order to get the damage done to the structure. Something of note is currently with Wrecker, as previously discussed, if even if you lose or survive an engagement, as long as you are not falling back and you are still in base contact with the structure, even if you've had that engagement, you can still use the Wrecker trait in that subsequent phase. Now, again, we're waiting on an FAQ with that type of thing. But if you have a Legion trait, which prevents you from running away, that can be a huge benefit when you're using Leviathan Siege Dreadnoughts because, sure, if as long as you know one or two of your models survives, then you have a good chance of actually dropping the building on anything that survived on their side. Moving on to the Solar Auxiliary Detachments, there are two weapons which I haven't chosen to discuss, and that's the Phosphex Bombs and the Wing Bombs. They don't deal a whole lot of damage unless used in high numbers, and because of the exorbitantly high numbers you'd have to use, or multiple turns of shooting, I've chosen not to include them, as I think all the other options that are on this list or in this presentation are quite a bit better. First up is the Malkador Tank Squadron. And at 305 points for six, it is a substantial portion of your army. However, it does get two wounds per model, which is, a again, a big benefit. So you have 12 wounds. They have to deal six wounds before you're taking that morale check and things like that. I'm new to GW games, so sometimes my images aren't perfect. Uh, in a previous video, somebody had pointed out I had the wrong Lehman Russ. Um, I apologize for that. In this case, I've actually chosen to show the Malkador Annihilator because it's an image that was on GW's website and it has a large hull gun. I realize it may not actually be the one with the hull-mounted demolisher cannon, 
which has a 12 inch range and deals 0.39 wounds per model. And again, that comes to the same 2.34 wounds of a Civitas building. So if you dedicate all six of the hull mounted weapons from the Malkador tank squadron into a Civitas structure, you can reliably destroy it. The other nice thing about the Malkador is it's useful. It's really useful against other targets. It's got a nice range of variety. However, uh, at 12 inches, it's, it's somewhere in the short to medium range. But the biggest thing is the main cannon shot is wasted. The only sponson you can take to shoot separately is the heavy Bolton, bolter sponson. But your main cannon on your turret, your turreted gun, w doesn't have the ability to affect the structure or shoot at a different target. So if you are taking that round to shoot a building, you're losing quite a bit of your firepower, and that creates an inefficiency. Coming up is the Rapier Quad Launcher. I realize it's the Death Guard version, but I couldn't find a Solar Auxilia version uh, on the website. In this case, you actually pay 120 points for nine of them. If you recall, the uh, Astartes could take that, but credit to Omega and Chris, who highlights the difference in that, is you aren't just paying for the Legion traits. You are paying for an additional save, uh, a close assault factor, a morale, and the you don't have the chain of command rule, which you would normally have on the Rapier Quad Launcher when you are taking it with the Auxilia. Again, that's a 16-inch direct fire with Demolisher, 0.19 wounds per model. And since you have nine of them, it comes out to 1.67 wounds. Again, pretty reliably killing that Civitas building. 16 inches is a pretty respectable range. You also have the crack and frag shots to affect everything else. And even once the building's done or destroyed, or if there are no buildings, you can usefully affect the rest of the battlefield. Moving on to some of the more popular in list building that I've seen online is the Marauder Bomber Squadron, and that's 245 points for three of them. It has the Marauder Bomb Bay, which can be targeted within three inches of the rear arc of a 24-inch move, and that's 0.63 wounds per model, which gives you just under two wounds, just enough to destroy a Civitas building reliably. At 24 inches, it is medium range. However, that is a little deceptive because a 24 inches from placing the model on the edge of the board or the back of your deployment zone, you actually can only affect about half of the battlefield. So if there is a building in the center or just on your opponent's side, you can't actually destroy that with these guys uh, in one turn reliably. The biggest benefit of the Marauder Bomber Squadron is that it does not prevent the use of your two choice weapons that you're putting on your wings. Notably, I could not find anything that prevented you from using the Sky Strike missiles on Overwatch. This is a popular tactic among the playgroup that I have, where you would bring on your Bomber Squadron or any type of bombers, drop their payload on the buildings, and then if your opponent comes in with some interceptors or something along those lines, you Sky Strike your missiles away, and you will have lost very minimal firepower, maybe just in those heavy bolters that are on the front or back. Up next is the Marauder Colossus, and this is only 85 points for one. And I think it is actually probably the best thing on this list. It has the Colossus Bomb, which is in three inches of your rear arc of a 22-inch move. So again, only about half the battlefield or, shortly, or slightly short of that. However, it does deal an average of five wounds to a building. The Colossus Bomb can destroy pretty much any building in the game. Notably, it also hits the garrison, namely after the structure collapses, which is very huge. So if they do have a garrison, uh, it, it's, it's a death trap. Uh, if you are garrisoning in a building against a Colossus, you are in for a hard time. Again, this has the two choice weapons, which can be a Sky Strike missiles on Overwatch. The only thing to note is its effectiveness is front loaded so if you might be getting that big hit on turn one or two but the effectiveness of the marauder colossus isn't the same round after round after round however that's kind of good sometimes because i my preferred loadout with the marauder colossus is to pair it with maybe just a regular marauder bomber or even a marauder destroyer at 95 points and then once the colossus has dropped its payload use that as an ablative wound for the other more important now having a more um, more effect on the battlefield. Like the destroyer's got that front cannon that can be very nice. 
Moving on to the strategic assets, the Knights and Titans were a little more difficult to assess when it comes to the capabilities because it always depends on what else your force is built for. Um, but there are some things that really stood out to me, specifically the Knights. Um, and here these next two entries are going to be where the big error was found. Both the Styrix and the Megara have the Hecaton Siege Claw, and that's an 83% chance for three wounds. And the Serastus Knight at 215 points has the Atropos Last Cutter, which in melee using their Wrecker feature is a 72% chance for three wounds. So these are pretty reliable at dropping those buildings, even the Grandis or the Militus, uh, things like that. And you can find those exact numbers on that spreadsheet below. But these are really good options if you want something, um, if you don't want to dedicate six Malkadors or something. You can get by with 200 points for something that can run up and affect the buildings. One of the things that stood out to me is the Knight Armagers. If you are choosing not to use that Stratasys, Thyrex, or Megira, you can add those Armagers to any of the other Knights as kind of a, a support detachment. But the 6-inch Thermal Spear does have a 0.49 wounds each, for totaling 1.47 wounds. Again, pretty reliable, and it is not actually melee, so you don't have to get up there. You can use that Advanced Fire move, um, hit that building from just outside of it. Maybe then you aren't... Um, engaged with whatever's in the building so you have you're a little safer things like that these also have the added oomph of rend and plus five close assault factor in case anything tries to challenge their positioning that's uh, arguably better than any of the ogrens granted they're they are expensive it's what i think 180 points for the three of them but that is six wounds or nine wounds even um things like that but they're really good at both destroying buildings and threatening anything that comes forward. Maybe you want to screen with those three, make those gaps that your opponent can't actually fit through. Rather than highlighting an actual unit, I did want to go through a slide of the Graviton Pulse weapons. There are three of them, the Warlord, Graviton Ruinator, the Graviton Eradicator, and the Reaver version, which is the exact same. But all three of these have the Demolisher trait. Graviton Pulse by itself does not actually affect structures, but if it has Demolisher, it can. The damage on these is inverted, so it has a higher chance to wound structures that have a higher save, and, and that's because it damages on successful saves rather than failed saves. So even the most resilient structures like fortifications have a high chance of being destroyed with that. In this case, there's a 1.94 damage average. It's actually, I think, D3 plus 1 wounds when you deal the damage but it's so it's like a 77 percent chance of that you can if you look up above there's the percentage chance to wound the civitas building and then the wound average um, so these are pretty good at destroying those buildings reliably it is actually really unfortunate that the warhound did not come with this in the starter set the graviton eradicator is a weapon that you have to buy separately and then the graviton ruinator that can be found on the battle titan can also deal with structures quite well in this case it is uh, over two wounds on average to a civitas building and over two wounds to even a fortification which is i think one of the only built weapons this and the classes bomb which can reliably kill a fortification in one shot since it has that higher save but only two wounds last but not least i have the warmaster heavy battle titan this is probably the first titan i'm going to be building or trying to find at this point it is 750 points however it does wield two 26 inch suzerain class plasma destructors each of those has 2.41 wounds per on average However, the nice thing about it is it's a Titan. It can split fire each of those. So two separate buildings or a unit in a building or even split those dice. You can't target a structure as the primary in a split dice situation. But if you have, um, if I'm not mistaken, they have four dice. And if you want to split off one dice into an infantry and then there's a building within four inches of that, you could split those other three dice into the building and still have a pretty decent chance of dropping that building. The other thing you can do is actually smash the building just by virtue of it being a Titan, and that averages about 1.46 wounds. 
Um, it is a seven wound titan, so it does get the plus two bonus to the wounds, which is kind of nice. So you're only looking to hit it about a 50-50 chance, things like that. It does have two additional weapons that it can use in addition to those plasma destructors. So with the split fire, you're always going to have plenty of firepower going. Granted, it is a 750-point unit. And let's be honest, it's cool. Who doesn't want to field something like a War Master's Heavy Battle Titan in battle? And that's what we are here to do is go out and have some fun. And with that, I hope you all enjoyed this updated presentation regarding how to collapse those structures. I apologize for any previous audio quality or the fact that there was that mathematical error in the record trait. But um, I hope to see you next time. Uh, we'll do the plug, smash the like button, hit subscribe. I think there's a bell or something, but uh, we'll see you all later.